So I have, I have, I love roller coasters. I, um, I love, you know, I love the climb when it goes up, the anticipation, right? You kind of hear the clicking noise, click, 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 click. And then I get, I start getting kind of scared because I realize that I'm looking for my car. And anybody else do this? And you're, you're in this very top and you're looking for the car. Like, how many of you are front row people? Like, you always go, for, you're waiting the long lines. Like, so not me yet. Because I get really scared. I know front row freaks me out. I don't know why. But anyway, um, so, but I love it. I, I love the thrill of that. Um, if, a, if a ride isn't scary enough, what, what, what I used to do is I used to try to get myself convinced that minimum wage people were putting a roller coaster together. And they probably forgot, they probably forgot a bolt or two. Does anybody else did the same thing? I'm like, and the roller coaster isn't scary enough. So I just kept thinking some, like my, my son or my daughter, who's like 16, they got this summer job and they're putting together that roller coaster and I'm fixing the, like, the, you know, and that's what I do. Um, <laughs> so I don't know why, but I, I just, you know, we're going to come back to, my microphone is all messed up, you guys. Uh, I'm going to come back to roller coasters in a, in a moment, but I want to rewind to take us to the roller coaster um, metaphor, if you will. We've been talking about friendships and uh, how important it is that God designed us to be in community, how he's designed us to share life together. We, we said that um, in the beginning, right, like God made like the heavens and the earth and it was good and he made all of the animals and they were good and he made the waters and it was good. And then he made man and he said, it is not good for him to be alone. So we're, we're wired to be in relationship. We're, we're wired to do life together. That's just how God made us. Uh, we're made in the image of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three in one. So we're, like that, we're also wired to do life together. Jesus, who was perfect in every way, also had friendships in his life. He allowed himself to be a part of people's lives, to be engaged with people. So if Jesus needed friends, how much more do you and I also need friends? We talked about um, toxic friends. Uh, you know, like stay away from certain people that they're not leading you closer to God, then like stay away. You can still be friendly to them, but there's certain people that, you know what, we're just not going to have a close relationship because like your lifestyle doesn't represent Jesus, and I just not want to be close to you. We talked about that. Uh, we also talked about circles of friendships. And if you put up this slide real quick, if you remember the circles a couple of weeks ago, like not everyone's in the same circle. So there's this everyone circle, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world, right? So everyone is a part of that. We're friendly to everyone. There's casual relationships, there's social. Jesus, when he sent out 72 uh, people to reach the lost, there's casual people, there's social. But then there's inner. Inner would be like Jesus' 12 disciples. And then there's core people, two or three people. And we talked a a couple weeks ago on how friendships will kind of really go back and forth. Sometimes, you know, we'll meet somebody in an environment like this. Hopefully, you're staying to have a meal together, and maybe you'll meet somebody. So right now, it might be a casual relationship. But over time, maybe that moves to social, and then maybe that moves to inner, right? So, you know, that's just kind of how the circle, circles go. Uh, so we, we talked about that and how we really need to relate to each circle uh, uniquely. But what I want to talk about, Monica, can you give me some water, please? I think I have a, I think I have a water glass in my office, maybe not. Um, what I want to talk about today is really recognizing that when it comes to building a friendship, living in community, I, I think there's probably no better metaphor than a roller coaster. That there are certain parts of friendships that I think that we should recognize that, hey, if I'm, if I'm going to get close with somebody, if I'm going to, if I'm going to move from like everyone part of the circle, the casual and social, that there's certain things that begin to happen. And in a large way, it really is very similar to that of what happens in, in a roller coaster. And, and so um, if you're taking notes this morning, the first thing is this, like, like you have to buckle up, right? So you have to, you have to buckle up. If you put that slide up, John, um, you have to actually get, you have to get in the seat, right? And so when it comes to 
friendships, when it comes to relationships, at some point, thank you so much. Can you guys give Pastor Monica a hand? At some point, you have to commit to the ride, right? At some point, you've been checking things out. Even if the new members, like at some point as new people, like you probably started watching the service online and you're like, you're just checking this roller coaster out and then maybe you showed up to the nine o'clock service or something and because it was less people and like, and then eventually you went to the discovering new life. Like you, like, so at some point you have to go from checking things out, whether it be relationships or friendships, life groups, serving you know, there's this season of checking this thing out, but eventually you have to commit. Like you have to get in the seat with an opportunity or with somebody, and if you will, you have to strap yourself in and say, hey, I'm committing to this ride. Wherever it might take me, the ups and the downs, the twists and the turns, like I'm committing to it. Um, and the thing is, is it, 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 let's just be honest, it might look scary. I, I think sometimes, you know, maybe the older you get, um, maybe the harder it is to develop newer relationships. I don't know, is that accurate? Like, you just because, you know, you just like, I don't know. When I was, when I, when I was in fifth grade, I, um, we moved to, from Minneapolis to Moorhead, Minnesota, and fifth grade, this is what I, this is what I did. I, I went to every neighborhood you know, every door around my house, and I knocked on the door. I'm like, do you have anybody my age who lives here? <laughs> That's how I found friends in fifth grade. Like, I was new to the town, my first move, and I didn't know what else to do it, so I just knocked on every door around my house, and I'm like, hey, yeah, my name is Jason, I'm new. Do you have any kids my age? And that's how I found my friends, and like, when I moved to Moorhead, and so uh, I had two or three friends, they all lived around me, um, can you imagine doing that now? <laughs> like you just moved to a new area. I mean, we, we should probably be cordial and say, hey, welcome to the area you just moved to. Like that's what we should do. Like, and give them some, but can you imagine being the opposite? If you start knocking on doors and saying, yeah, I just moved here. I'm looking for friends. Would you be my friend? <laughs> You're like, your wife is, babe, we're moving. Like we're, we're out of here. So just like, I don't know. And, and so, like, I think there's fear a little bit as you approach the whole friendship thing um, or, or serving or life groups. It's just a fear element. And I think at some point you have to say, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to buckle in. Um, and, and I would say this, that once you decide to commit, whether it's a friendship or you're checking things out with somebody or serving or a life group or some opportunity that you have, can I just encourage you, like, once you buckle in the seat, stay in the seat until the ride stops. Like, can you just imagine if you're on the roller coaster and you get really scared and you bail on a turn? Death is soon to happen. I really believe that that's what happens spiritually when we start a relationship or start a connection that we believe God is leading us in and then something happens in that connection, that relationship, that environment, and fear causes us to bail. We don't physically die, but I believe we begin to spiritually die because this, this is important because God placed us in certain environments and circles and situations because there's something that he wants us to get out of it and grow through it. And if you bail in the middle of what God is doing in your relationships, you begin to grow spiritually. So when God leads you in an area, buckle up, get on the ride until God says it's done. Yes? I think another way to look at it is maybe this way. Um, sometimes I'm a football, I, I'm not a great football, but I'm a fan, I'm not a player. So um, sometimes we watch, like let's say, just say football. If, if you're a spectator, you can watch the game of football and you can, you know, you can be the armchair quarterback and like you guys should do this and this and this. And, but something's different when you get in the game. Isn't that not true? 
when you, when you go from spectator to just watching to getting in the game, all of a sudden the coach puts you in the game and somebody tackles you, right? And you're like, they just hit me. And that's because you're in the game. And just recognize that when you get in the game of relationships and community and friendships that there's something different about the game as opposed to just watching. So expect to play, if you're playing football, to get tackled. So you get back up, you brush yourself off, and you're like, that was a good hit, dude. That was really good. And, and you, keep, you keep going. You keep moving. Um, so that, that's the first thing I think to recognize when it comes to relationships. And, and, and I know I'm sounding this morning, like usually we'll try to take a passage, and, and we're going to try to do that next week and really dig through it. So just, I just feel like some of the stuff is so practical, and we're going to pull a few scriptures in a moment, but I, I just if you're new with us, usually we like to pull a passage apart and kind of dig into that. Um, but we're ending our series on friendships, and I, I just feel like this is so huge. So the second thing that I've noticed when it comes to relationships and connecting and community and building um, just what, you know, inner connection spots. Like, the second thing I notice is this, that there's this uphill moment. But it's actually a good moment. And so, John, if you put that slide up, please. Uphill, like, there's this incline. And, and here's what I feel like. When, I, when I'm on a roller coaster on an incline, I'm pretty pumped. I'm pretty excited. I love looking around, and, and I love checking things out, and like, the, who's ever with me, this is a positive moment. I'm scared, but I'm really thrilled. And I think there's the same thing when it comes to relationships, that when we first start something new, it's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. It just is. Like, so something new, like, this is so awesome, and whatever it might be, if it's a life group or a place to serve or you know, like a group of people that you're connecting with. If friendships, like, it just seems great because what happens is, like, something caused you to, to connect with that person or that group. Something caused you to like that. And so you're being built up and they're building, you know, you're building them up and there's, like, encouragement. Is this true? There's just something seems to be great in this beginning stages of whatever relationship that you're on. Even in marriage, there's a thing called the honeymoon phase, Right? You know, we're like, for the first couple of years, like, nothing is wrong at all. This is just so awesome. And then you have a child. And anyway, um, <laughs> but so, like, but recognize the stage. Like, so, in, like, enjoy it. It is an encouragement stage. It's a, it's a connecting stage. It's a, a place where, like, you just... Like, you build each other up. Even Jesus, I, I love this. So at, at some point, Jesus calls Simon, Simon Peter, and says, hey, Simon, follow me, right? Like, join this relationship. Join this, 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 this connection thing that, that, that we're doing. Like, join me. But then very shortly after, I love the fact that Jesus changes Simon's name to Peter, because Jesus sees something in Simon that Simon doesn't see in himself, and he sees him as Peter the Rock. And when it comes to that stage, like, just enjoy the, the, the stage of, like, man, just encouraging each other. But just know this. What comes up, it, it must go down. Yeah, it, it must. Yeah, what comes up must, must come down. Um, I, I, I'm just calling this. I'm just calling this kind of the drops of disappointment. The, the drops of disappointment. Um, you get buckled into a relationship, to a friendship, into community. You 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 start the excitement of this is going to be awesome. This is going to be the my best friend ever. We're going to be best friends forever, or whatever it might be. Or I'm just going to get involved and serve and change the world. And and, and there's all this excitement, and then you get to this point of like, whoosh, well, let's call it drop of disappointment. Have you ever been disappointed by somebody or something in your life? In the last hour and a half since you've been a part of service this morning, you know, have you been disappointed by something that happened, right? It doesn't take much for disappointment to happen, but just know that it's going to happen. 
I think realizing that it's going to happen is super, super imperative, just knowing that it's going to happen. Uh, we've all been disappointed. We've all been let down. Um, think of, well, again, Jesus, Jesus is so awesome to me. It, Jesus, we've shared this story a couple times in the last few weeks, but it's such an intriguing story. Jesus is on the end of his public ministry. It's, it's Thursday. He, he's praying, right? Remember this Garden of Gethsemane? He's praying, and he, he says to his disciples, hey, c- come pray with me. Actually, three, Peter, James, and, and John. Come pray with me. And it is one of the most difficult seasons of his life. Pray with me. So Jesus goes off, they say about a rock's throw, and he comes back and he finds the disciples sleeping. <coughs> hey, can't you guys pray with me for just pray with me for an hour? Like just can you just be in agreement with me? Can you can you just stand with me for an hour? Can we just pray together? So Jesus goes off again by himself and this happens a couple times. Finally, they're still sleeping. He comes back and Jesus says, hey, you know what? The time is here. Let's go. I've really thought a lot about how I would have responded. <clears throat> how would I have responded if I was Jesus in that situation? And I'm like, it's the most difficult time in my life. I'm, you know, If I knew I was going to be killed tomorrow, I'm like, you guys pray and I get there and they're sleeping I would be like, hey, you guys, wake up. Come on, come on, come on. Don't you care about me? Don't you care about what's happening? Aren't you there? For, I've been there for you. I healed your mom, Peter, right? Like, I, like I've, I've provided. Can you guys not be there for me for just a moment? Wouldn't you kind of be like that? And then soon you go pray. And then when you come back and they're still sleeping, how many of you would just be like, you know what, you guys, just sleep. I've got this. Just do what you're going to do. Just go along your merry old way. As a matter of fact, I, I'm just going to go by my, I, How many, honestly, how many, isn't that kind of how we live? Especially as people like, I can work better by myself. I can get it done quicker. And I know it's going to be right instead of dealing with people. And so sometimes we're just like, hey, you guys, just do what you're going to do. I'm going to go by myself, isolate. And I think in that sense, we jump off the ride. We give up on the relationship or the community that God called us to be a part of because a disappointment happened and we jump off the ride and we're like, hey, I'm just going to do this myself and thank you very much. And I just want to again say, don't jump off. Work through it, but recognize it, it's, it's going to happen. I just, it's going to happen. Number, number four, so you, we've gone up, we've latched in, we've gone up, we've gone down. When you have a really fast downhill thing. What's the first thing that happens usually in a roller coaster? Anybody remember? It's really high and you're going all the way down. Why are you trying to gain momentum for? It's your loop, right? Yeah, you're you're probably going to go, go and put that slide up there, would you? You're probably going to go for a loop. It's your first loop is coming. So I'm just going to call this the loop of offense. Disappointment is one thing, but offense is something altogether. Um, maybe offense comes from unrealistic or unmet expectations. Maybe it comes from a misunderstanding of words or action. Maybe it comes from assuming someone's motives, like you were friends with somebody or a relationship, or like, like somehow you got offended. Somehow offense took place. And this is what's really scary. If you... If you don't deal with offense, soon it moves to resentment. If you don't wrestle with offense in every relationship that you're in, it will quickly move from offense to resentment. And you know what resent is, resentment is to me? Have you ever been, have you ever been at an amusement park and um, like you've seen the upside down loop? Put that back on there, would you? And it's stuck. How many, is anybody, I'm curious, anybody else been stuck? Anybody been stuck on the upside down loop? Have you, you been stuck? Oh. Offense, 
that's not resolved to me is like getting stuck in the upside down loop. Offense, unresolved, leading to resentment. Like, I never happened to me, but I've, I've seen it went to Valley Fair in Minneapolis. And it's like it, the, the corkscrew, it's this blue roller coaster. Anybody have been there before, the corkscrew? And I, I don't know why, but it seems every like 15 rides, here's this car that gets stuck upside down. And I've heard stories, horror stories, about some cars being stuck for like an hour. Can you just imagine? I'd just be puking. Anyway, um, so like just realize that in relationship offense is going to happen. It, it's it's going to come. Just know it's coming. Um, why, why does it come? Because, because it's easy for us to assume people think things. It's easy for us to be offended by people's actions. Why? Because we're human. Like somewhere along this path, we thought that believers are the best people ever and there never should be problems if with another Christian. Like didn't we kind of think that? When you first got saved, didn't you just kind of expect that everyone else that was a believer was almost perfect? And you realize that, wait a second, like, but we're all still human. And we're all still, like, sinners dependent upon Jesus. And we're all still make mistakes. And so no matter where you go, there's, like, there's really godly followers of Christ that have great character and, you know, great godly people. Then there's other followers of Christ, and you're like, are you even a follower of Jesus? Like, does Jesus even know, right? How many? I know we're not supposed to judge. I know, but, like, haven't you ever thought that before? And you're just like, I don't know. I don't even know if, like, I don't even know if you're a believer. And so just recognize that when it comes to our faith circles, just because we're friends with a believer, just because we're connecting with someone that loves Jesus, doesn't make it any easier because, man, we're all sinners and we all fall short, all of us. And so we don't know what someone's thinking because we're not God. We can't understand why they do what they do. And so the problem that we have to wrestle with is simply saying, God, like, I don't know what's happening here. I don't know why this person is acting like this. But God, I just, I just give it over to you. You are God. You know everything. I just let it go because I'm not infinite. I'm not all wise. I don't know everything. And so I'm not going to try to assume what's happening. I'm just going to let God deal with it. That's good wisdom, yeah? I mean, we're just, I don't know about you. Um, I'm probably the only one in the room that says, the wrong thing at the right time. Anybody else do that? Like you just, yeah. I just, ah, oh, you know, sometimes I'm just like, I didn't mean to say it like that. And it just kind of came out. And once it gets out there, it's just there. No one else deals with this. I know, I know. Yeah, just you and me, just a couple of us. We hang out together and, and ride these roller coaster circles and yeah. Um, but, man, we just make mistakes, We're, so offense is going to happen. It, it's going to be a part of life. Just know it when you connect, when you start being intimate, new members of new life. Like, just, I hate to say this, but um, you didn't find a perfect church. Right? Yeah. You, you, you just didn't. Um, even if everyone else is perfect around you, like, I'm not. And so uh, I just qualify from that. But you, you just didn't. So new members, just know that you're, you're going to face some offense and some difficulties. But stick on the ride. Stay with it. Stay the course. Grow and, and grow. Be like Jesus. And build each other up. Um, Proverbs 18, 19 says this, an offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. Isn't that not true? Once offense happens, it's really hard to win, to win that back. So be careful. Don't let it linger. Ephesians 4, 2 through 3 says this, Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with one another. I love that. Like, be humble, be gentle, be patient with one another. And listen to that phrase, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Isn't that good? 
You know what? Making allowance, I just call that giving each other grace. When we engage one another, just recognize that we're on this roller coaster called life and friendship and things are going to be said and things are going to be done. So just give allowance. You know, give somebody, go ahead and give somebody, if you will, $50 in their bank account so they can use it up and not take it from you. Just give somebody the ability to say, hey, you know what? I expect things like that because you're human and so it's not personal. Be patient with each other. Making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, like binding yourself together with peace. And so I think that's good advice. Amen? As you ride this roller coaster that we call life. Number five. After this flippity, what do you call that, this loop, there's usually a downhill and then usually what happens after, after a couple of downhills. Where do we go? Either back up or we go like, like the sharp turn, right? Sharp turns, twists. And so this next point, I just have um, in relationships recognize that there will be turns of unmet expectations, misunderstandings, disagreements. Here's the problem with every metaphor. <laughs> Like, you, you don't have a perfect one, right? All I know is this, that relationships are not easy, but they're worth sticking through them. And there's going to be ups and downs and flips, and there's going to be turns, things you didn't expect to see coming. It might be a disagreement. It might be we just uh, unmet expectation. I really, you know, it might be stuff like I, I thought we were really close and, and you went to Green Bay, and you didn't call me, but you went with your other friends, and like, don't stay, right? Don't stay there. Don't jump off the seat of friendship because somebody went to Green Bay without you, right? It was a turn you didn't see coming. Stay, stay on, the, on the roller coaster that you call friendship. Stay there. Just know that, like, just give grace. Give some, some, um, some what did we just said in Ephesians? Give some uh, allowance for, for misunderstandings, for things to happen. Or maybe, maybe you thought, you know, you called them and they didn't call you back. Or maybe worse, you inboxed them on social media. And you thought social media was like, you know, knocking on their door. And it's been three weeks and they still haven't responded yet, Right? Just, it's a turn on this roller coaster that we call life, that we call friendship, that we call relationships. It's, it's just a turn. Maybe you've come to a realization that they don't believe exactly like you do. They, you know, they're like, they don't exactly, aren't on the same page as you. And so you're like, how can you believe that? Right? And so you kind of freak out for a moment. Can I just encourage you, like, give them the grace to let them walk their life according to their, where, you know, like, give them the grace to let them walk their life. Like, stand for truth, but give people the grace to live out their life as God is working in them. I don't know, does that make sense at all? Like, I don't know about you, but when you got saved, Um, were you perfect immediately or did Jesus have to kind of clean you out a little bit, right? Like sometimes we we expect people to just, you know, line up with everything that we hold to and like just know that Jesus is working on people. So pray for them, give them grace, like speak truth, but let, let people walk through their faith journey. The Bible says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So just know disagreements are gonna come. And, and just kind of be prepared for that. Don't jump off the thing, this friendship thing or this church thing or this small group deal that you're a part of or serving. Just know what's coming and you, you work through it. You, you work through it. As I, I said this a moment ago, metaphors are tough because, you, you, you know, they fall apart, they break apart. But I, I, let me just summarize this whole message in, in, in this. Like, we are wired to do life together. We're wired to share life together. And sometimes 
hurts come and disappointments come and unmet expectations come and disagreements come. And the natural temptation is to jump off this ride that we call relationship or friendship or community or family that we just want to jump off and say, okay, this isn't for me. And I, my, my encouragement to you this morning as we looked at all these messages over the last few weeks is like enjoy the roller coaster that we call friendship. Just enjoy it. And just let some twists happen and some turns happening and grow through it and be more like Jesus through it. But stay on the ride until God calls you off. Can you receive that this morning? Can you receive that? In this ride, people will change circles. Some will be core people. Then they'll go to inner circle and then out. Things will change. Some will be great people. Then there'll be toxic, you know, circle and things will change, but just, just stick with it.